I have a lot of 3D printers and because of that, I have to obviously take care of said printers. And you guys are constantly asking me, what is the maintenance I'm doing? What are the routine things I'm doing to make sure my printers are operating as efficiently as possible? So whether you have one 3D printer or a bunch, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you my top maintenance tricks to maintaining all these machines. Let's get started. So the first two things we're gonna talk about kind of go hand in hand. It is a clean bed and a level bed. And we're gonna talk about both of those separately and how they coincide with each other. A clean bed that isn't level isn't gonna do great and a level bed that isn't clean isn't gonna do great either. If I had a dollar for every time this was somebody's problem when helping them troubleshoot either on Instagram or Discord or something, I wouldn't need to make YouTube videos anymore. So how am I cleaning my bed? Well, I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol. This stuff is super cheap to get. You can get it like CVS or Amazon or whatever. And I'm just spraying my beds down and wiping them clean. Now, after that, if you wanna go and use something like a glue stick, that's gonna depend on your print surface and the quality and the stickiness you want on your bed. Newer beds, like these really awesome PEI sheets, typically don't need glue. However, of recently, I've started using glue on some of them, because I've been doing such large prints, I wanna make sure there's that extra layer of adhesion. Whereas printers over here, like my K1 Maxes, that also have a PEI textured bed, and even printers like the CRM4 and the Neptune 3 Max, I'm not using any adhesives on these, I'm just making sure they stay nice and clean, and I haven't had any issues since. And what I'll even do intermittently is instead of just cleaning them with ISO, about once a month, I'll take all the beds off my printer, bring them inside or bring them over to my sink over there and actually wash them with Dawn dish soap and really give them a good scrubbing. This way I know they're nice and fresh for the um, upcoming projects. Now, let me just say, just because I'm using glue on some beds and not others, doesn't mean that's exactly what you need to do. Use whatever works. If you, a clean bed is working perfectly for you, that's awesome. If you need to slather it with some glue just to help you, that's fine too. Don't get too in your heads, oh, well, Frank's not using this and this person on Facebook. If it works for you and you're getting successful prints, that's all that matters and you can press on with that. If you wanna go and troubleshoot it and change different beds over time, that's fine too. But if it works, it works. Okay, so your bed is clean, but is it level? Now let me start this off by saying level doesn't mean level. There is a misconception in the 3D printing world, especially if you're new to printing. Do, 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 I need to get the thing. Do, 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 do. This is a bubble level. And this is what you use to level a shelf or a desk. That is not level. This is what I've seen some people do in the past of 3D printing. Now, with new printers, like the K1 Maxes and the X1 Carbons and even really expensive Prusa machines, you don't need to worry about adjusting your bed and leveling anymore. These machines do it by themselves and that is amazing. I actually found myself using a sticky note paper trick to level a 3D printer a few weeks ago and I realized I hadn't done that in months. But if you're still using older bed slinger machines like the Neptune 3 Plus or the Neptune 3 Max or old CR10s and you still have these leveling adjustment knobs on the bottom, it is something to understand. The actual word for it is tramming. A 3D printer can print upside down. I literally show that in a video right here. What you're actually concerned with is the distance of the nozzle. You're making sure that the nozzle is the same distance from this corner to this corner to this corner to this corner. Because if that's off level, you're gonna have some weird prints or adhesion issues. And that's what we talk about when we're leveling a bed. It should be called tramming. It got lost somewhere in translation. And I'm not quite sure what happened, but that's what it's actually called you're making sure the nozzle distance is the same. This way, if you were to make a square, it's gonna stick the same way. I do have a great video on leveling your bed manually right here, and I will link that down below. It is a little bit older, and I am due to make an updated one, especially with all these newer machines out here, but if you want a more in-depth guide on how to level your bed with auto and manual leveling, definitely go check out that video. And honestly, even these new machines like the K1 Maxes and the P1Ps, Occasionally check in on that first layer. A lot of these machines do an awesome little prime line at the front of the bed. And I'm sure you guys, if you've been 3D printing for a few weeks at least, you like peeling that off at the beginning or end of a print. Keep an eye on that because even these things can come uncalibrated if you're not careful. And that is a great indication to know that that first little nozzle, that first layer is actually sticking. That's why some people print with brims or even rafts to make sure your first layer is going down perfectly. And especially on printers, you can actively level. Again, check that video I talked about before. It is a great way to make sure your first layer is going down nice and smooth. Okay, next up is the hardware. And what I mean by that is the 3D printer itself. And this is so slept on. It is actually criminal how many people don't actually check their printer to make sure it's not loose or wobbly and you know, everything's tight. I've gone over this in a couple other videos, but you could send the best possible G code to your 3D printer. Your settings are perfect. You've dialed in that filament. Everything's coming out great. 
But if your bed is super loose and wobbly or your gantry is loose or everything's off kilter and stuff just isn't tight, it doesn't matter how good that G-code is, the machine can't perform to its best ability. Now again, with newer machines like the K1s and X1s and all that, this is a little bit of a thing of the past. There are still ways to tighten the belts and clean your rods on those, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but especially large bed slingers. It's gonna be a long time before we get turnkey, out-of-box, core XY, massive printers like this. Uh, the Chitty Tech X3 Max and the K1 Max are really the biggest ones available right now but occasionally go over your printer. If it's a bed slinger, grab the bed and give it a wobble. See if you can move it left and right. Grab your printer head and see if you can wobble it forward and back. This printer head should only ever move left and right. So if it is wobbling forward and back, you're gonna get weird banding. Not only that, occasionally take off this print head and actually look at the nozzle assembly, the hot end assembly that's underneath that. Typically there's only two screws holding that in and if those come loose, your whole nozzle head inside of this can also be loose. The printer wants to do one thing at a time. Even though it's doing a bunch of things at a time, your nozzle head only wants to go in your uh, X direction. Your bed only wants to go in your Y direction and everything wants to go in the Z direction. If there's discrepancies in how it can move, you're gonna get print lines, weird print issues, ghosting and all that stuff. So just give your printer a good check and look around, make sure everything's tight, tighten up those eccentric nuts, those little hex nuts that are behind the print head. Turns out that's why you get all these awesome tools to maintain your printer. Throw the wrench on it and loosen the, the, uh, the eccentric nut or the wheel and then you can see this is wobbly now. Now I can take the wrench and start to tighten that wheel up and it gets less wobbly. This is gonna happen over time because your roller wheels are gonna wear down. They're rubber, you're gonna need to change them eventually, so they are gonna start to lose that tension and get a little loose. So make sure your printer's tight, go back over the nuts and bolts you used to assemble it, even if stuff was missed in the factory, because trust me, stuff is absolutely missed in the factory on these things, and make sure the machine is as tight and assembled properly as possible. Next up, filament storage. Now. I have a large production system for 3D printers. I burn through filament a lot. And as you can see down here, I don't actually store my filament probably how I should. Now granted, most of this is PLA and silks. I'm not running things like nylons, carbon fibers, even PETG that does really need to be stored. I believe the word is hydrophobic, uh, where it really wants to absorb water from the air. I have a dehumidifier over here. It's off right now because obviously I'm recording, so it stays pretty nicely in here. So definitely consider filament storage in your day-to-day -day operation. I also don't leave filament on my printers. I just tested some new beds on my K1 Maxes, so there's some open filament there, but I'm gonna remove that so I remove the tension off of the roll. I'm sure you guys have had a printer sitting for a few days and you come back in and the filament is snapped because it just got brittle over time. So I constantly am unloading my printers and making sure the filament is at least stored in a nice place and I burn through filament so quickly typically that I don't actually need to store it in the vacuum sealed bags with desiccants and all of that. But if you aren't gonna be using the filament as much, if you just have it sitting around, maybe consider storing it a little bit better than I do. Okay, next up is nozzle cleaning. Now this isn't something I typically do as often as cleaning the beds and stuff, but if you're starting to get some weird under extrusion or you just feel like there might be a clog, there's these really awesome little tools you can get. Now your printer should have come with like this needle and this should just help you clean out the nozzles as it is. Make sure your printer's unloaded and you can kind of usually push this right through and you can barely see the needle coming through back there. I know that nozzle isn't clogged. However, you can get these awesome little um, filament pusher things. Some of these come with my K1s and X1s and all that fun stuff. And this is a little bit of a thicker diameter. So you can usually push this down in there as well. And oh look, you can see the filament already coming out that the, the needle wasn't getting. And I'm actually forcing this along the side walls and just kind of scraping out that filament, pushing it down into the nozzle and you can peel that away. The printer is hot by the way, so definitely be careful when doing this. And you can rinse and repeat this to make sure that there's nothing stuck in that nozzle. If you do have a weird clog, heat your printer up, use these tools and try to clean out that system. So the last thing I wanna talk about before we wrap this video up is a little less about the printer maintenance and more about the environment that the printer is existing in. Now, if you only have one 3D printer and it's sitting in your bedroom or a spare room or somewhere in your house, you don't really need to worry too much about this, but it still might help you out. But especially if you have multiple 3D printers, consider your workflow, consider where the printers are living. Do you have good access to the filament rolls, the spools? Do you need to print something to have better access to that? Are you commonly using tools that you're always using to swap filament out or tighten parts up or take things apart? 
have those readily accessible. Organization goes a long way when dealing with multiple 3D printers and making sure that the maintenance is good and everything is taken care of. You don't want to have them in a bad, dusty environment. Obviously, not everybody has a nice workshop or garage. You can get 3D printing enclosures that are like these cool photo booth things that you can zip up and there's tons of ways to make those and keep them on the cheaper end to make sure your printer is being taken care of. I know I am constantly changing filament over here on my K1 Maxes, so I printed out a spool holder for the side of them. This way I'm not constantly reaching behind them to try, try to change that roll of filament. The last printer I need to do that to is probably my P1P down there because the roll is still behind the printer where the P1S has this AMS system and the filament's right here. Spending some time to think about those quality of life upgrades can absolutely improve the routine maintenance and the way you use your printer and you interact with it. But before you go guys, I am working on another video that's almost like a spiritual successor to this, things I wish I knew before I started 3D printing. And I wanna get your guys' feedback on the things you now know, having one printer or 20 printers, or maybe you've been doing this for a few years, what are the things you wish you could go back in time and tell your past self? It's you sitting on a computer, looking at a screen, you're so excited to get to your printer, and you could time travel and be like, hey wait, you should think about this or you should know this before you start. I'd love to see what your guys' experience with that are. This way I can kind of shift the video to that and see if our experiences relate to each other. And hey, maybe I'll even feature your comment in the video if it's something I hadn't even thought of. So leave some comments down below on things you wish you knew about 3D printing or maybe even just some normal maintenance things that I didn't cover in this video that you find yourself having to do more often than not. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I upload videos every week about 3D printing and cosplay and everything in between. And I don't want you guys to miss anything. So make sure you ring the notification bell so you stay up to date on all of it. But that's it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day. I just broke the benchy. Oh. <laughs> oh.